Hi, I'm Jane. Today I would love to share with you an exciting discovery that I've made on the Fibonacci sequence. Um, this has actually been partly published in one of my set of six workbooks called The Divine Proportion. So this was actually done for like 12 year old children. And in this book, talking about the Fibonacci sequence, we um, I did a chapter on the the 60 code, when you examine all the final digits of the Fibonacci sequence, there's an infinitely repeating 60 um, pattern. And so they look at all the final digits, the end digits, they plot them. And so what I really gave them was a worksheet. So this is star kids, uh, young teenagers learning sacred geometry and not just giving them the information, but here they're actually writing it all down and working with it to remember it. So this is a book of worksheets on the Fibonacci sequence. Okay, so what I've done is I've put this together as a PowerPoint presentation. So I'm giving it a name because this has never been discovered before. It's called the Fibonacci 60 code. It's a spiraling graph pattern. So I've got the solution here that I'm talking about. There's one straight line solution there, and there's another version of it over here done with semicircles. So for you to understand how I got these spiraling patterns on graph paper, we need to just go through the theory and the history of these numbers. So I'm giving it a name, derived by continuous subtraction of 10 or modulus 10. That means we're looking at the end digits and it's the observation of the final digits of the Fibonacci sequence. So here's the 60 code. This 60 code was discovered by a French mathematician about nearly 240 years ago by Philip Lagrange. So this is in our history books. And so we all know the 60 code. Any pairs, the one, if you go through the center, the one to the opposite number is a nine, one and nine is 10. Or if you go three here and seven, three and seven is 10. So all the diametrically opposing pairs add up to 10. But there's so much symmetry in there that I'm going to reveal a little bit more. And if you look closely, every fifth number, every fifth Fibonacci number is divisible by five. So when you do Fibonacci sequence, one, one, two, three, five, um, uh, eight, 13, 21, 34, uh, 55, that's divisible by five. And it goes on every fifth number and it produces this golden cross, this uh, wheel of 12. It's called a dodecagram. So the 60 code has 12 rays. And every fifth number is divided, is divisible by five. And there's a 24 pattern in there and a 60 pattern. So this is actually a code for time. This is the ancient Babylonian mathematics. Why did we use um, 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour? Okay, so that's that's been given to us from history. You can see I've done a lot of hand diagrams with the Fibonacci code relating it to the Earth Heart program. And it's kind of a thing called wheels within wheels. But we discovered that if you just look at the end digits at 60, but this thing here, P300, means the periodicity is 300 when you examine not just the last digit, but the two final digits. So if you looked at Fibonacci sequence, examine the two final digits, it repeats every 300. If you looked at the three final digits, it repeats every 1500 digits. And it gets more amazing. If you look at the four final digits, it repeats every 15,000. So there's wheels within wheels within wheels. Okay, so you'll see that these are the Fibonacci numbers here. For those that don't know the Fibonacci sequence, it goes 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, forever. Infinite additive sequence where we add 1 plus 1 make 2, 1 and 2 make 3, 2 and 3 make 5, 3 and 5 make 8. But see what happens here? 5 and 8 make 13, but when we subtract 9, we get a 4. 8 and 4 is 12, and when we subtract 9, we get a 3. So this is by subtraction by 9, but we're interested in the central 60 code where we subtract from 10. So that's why it's called modulus 10. So this diagram was photoshopped and done by um, Joe Dubbs from America. He's put together a lot of these codes that we've all worked on and embellished them so that people will respond to the symmetry. Okay, so there's the Fibonacci numbers. On the This goes forever. And when we subtract 10, I've highlighted all the final digits. So at 34, we write down a 4. For 55, I just write down the 5. We're pattern hunters. We're looking for re repetition. 
and we realize that it repeats at every 60 digits. So I've taken this string of 60 digits and written it as a two times 30 rectangular frame. So these are the same 60 digits, but you notice that every fifth column is either a zero or a five, and every column adds up to 10. Four and six is 10, three and seven. So this was discovered by Lagrange 230 years ago. But you could do a three by 20 frame. Um, there's patterns in there. You could do it as a five times 12, still the 60 digits. You could do it as a six times 10. Even when you do it as a six time by 10, you see the zeros and the fives all line up. And these are all the pairs. There's many pairs of tens in there. But we're gonna work with this one. So the, I want you to focus on this. This is called the four rows of 15, because four times 15 is 60. We're gonna plot each row, and I'm gonna show you the pattern for each row as we progress, so that you can see what's this uh, pattern that Jane's talking about. So let's have a look at it. First of all, I, every year I do a fast in September, a two through or three week fast. And you can see here, if you zoom in here, the 60 pattern is written around this wooden table because I'm very interested in it. There's so much more. So to understand the pattern, we have to study what Ulam Rose did. Ulam, he started with graph paper. There's the number one. And when he wanted to plot all the prime numbers, so he went one, two, three, four, five, six in a spiral on a grid matrix of squares. And, and he, as he did this by hand, when he plotted the first 1,000 primes, he connected them, all the primes, and he got this exquisite symmetry, which was hidden there, because on the surface, we think prime numbers are random, but he showed us through this spiraling grid pattern that there is um, symmetry. And then he, and thanks to the age of computers, this is why we have to bless technology, thanks to computers, when we extend the spiral to 10,000 primes, you can see this amazing symmetry there. And when we go into the few billions of primes, the amazing conclusion is it's not random. There's actually, it forms an organic rose flower. So the, the hidden mathematics of the prime numbers, which we, they told us that there is no symmetry, when we examine it through the right cortex of the brain, the right hemisphere of visual learning, we see when we turn numbers into pictures that there is high level symmetry in there. So we're going to use this. And also the other person that worked with the spiral is called Gan. Um, Gan did another spiral. So from the center there goes one, two, three, four. This time he's going clockwise. We're gonna go anti-clockwise. But this matrix here of spiraling numbers was used for predicting when to buy and sell in the stock market. So Gan was the richest, most successful man ever in the stock market. He used magic squares of nine, wheels of 24, and he related it to cycles of nature and astrology and harmonics. So we're copying what the masters did. And so this is my work. So I'm on graph paper now. We're gonna start at number one. And we're gonna observe the first row of 15 numbers. We're gonna go one, one, two, three, five, eight. That's the first few. Here's the first 15. At the moment, it just looks like a square squiggle. There's nothing interesting. So let's. Continue on from here and look at the next 15 numbers. So I started from here and it did a zigzag and it ended up there. We're halfway through because this is the first 30 of the 60 digits. Now we're going to add, an, from here we add another 45. Now this is the discovery. As we do the next 45, watch what happens. The pattern moves and comes back to where it started. So the last or 60th digit re-enters to the first digit. And this is quite an, an interesting and fascinating revelation that this apparently random 60 code manages to enter itself. It's a bit like a torus. It has an inside and an outside. If this pattern, as it went around the graph, went random, we wouldn't be working with it. We wouldn't be talking with it. So this asks a really, really important question. Like, how can we apply this symmetry into our daily life. So um, I wrote something, this is kind of my conclusion. I might read that out actually. So Jane's discovery of the 60 Fibonacci code is essentially connected to the alpha and the omega. That's the biblical, the biblical principle that the first is connected to the last, the beginning to the end. It is akin to any magic square that is harmonically arranged and when converted into a pattern, by drawing the first number to the second, to the third, and to the last number, 
generates an exquisite symmetry. Represented hidden or inherent order amid the apparent chaos. This 60 code pathway is about re-entry and I would highlight that word whatever this discovery is it's about data re-entering or looping back into itself so that it creates an infinity in infinity. Same as in a labyrinth that takes the aspiring seeker from the outside to the inside. And it also touches upon the concept of cycles and infinity. It encourages us to ask more questions like, does this harmonious 60 cycle relate to 60 hertz? As you know, hertz is the cycles per second. What are we currently using in our houses? Is it harmonious or disharmonious energy? Are we obeying the laws of nature? And, and here we say, was this the knowledge known to Tesla? Was Tesla working with the 60 hertz cycle this, to this time code of the Fibonacci sequence? So the mystery of revelation all encoded in the folds and compressed petals of the rose flower. So I believe that this discovery has a direct um, relationship to the laws of nature because that's what we need to copy and to comprehend the laws of nature. So then just to complete this, I decided that instead of using square lines before we started here, what happens if we just draw a semicircle for one, one, two, three, five, eight, 13, etc. So that's the first 15. I'm oh no, sorry, this is the first 15, then it becomes the first 30, and that's the first 45 numbers. And when the final image is here, when we do all the 60. So this was just an experiment to see what would we get if we used semicircles instead of straight lines. So that's the essentially what I've put together as a little PowerPoint. And just while I'm on the subject, just in a few minutes, there is actually a second discovery based on this wheel of 60. So there's something beautifully hidden inside the 60 code. So I'm just going to show you this. If we can zoom in on, there's the wheel of 60. And you can see that the, see the 12 golden rays here, they're, they're every fifth digit. Like um, they're every, every zero, five, five, zero, five, five. So every, um, the 12 fives are 60, as you know, so every fifth digit is divisible by five. But we're interested in the digits between the rays. So I'm going to put my fingers here at one, one, two, three. See how if we thought of one, one, two, three as a number as 1,123, and we add it to the opposing quad numbers or set of four, we've got one, eight, nine, nine. What does it add up to? It all adds up to um, one, 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 one. So any four numbers added to the opposite four numbers they all add up to um, 1111. So it all adds up, all of this information adds up to 6,666. Um, I'll just go through, this is the data that I put together. So we're looking at the Fibonacci and this is all from the Fibonacci end digits. Um, let me see, here it is. Yeah, so what I'm doing is I'm adding up all these quad numbers and so embedded within the 60 code is 66,660. That's the sum of all these. And you drop the zero so we can actually call it harmonic 666. Um, someone I know called Lucien Khan, he's um, also done, a, there's a lot of other people who've worked on the 60 code. Um, and he discovered that um, if you look at the 216 Fibonacci number, it's a really big number. And when you add up all the digits of this big number here, it happens to add up to 216. And I think same with the 70, here's the 72nd Fibonacci number. 72 fib, fib number adds up to this. If you add up all the digits, it adds up to 72 as well. So mathematicians, we're always interested in looking for pattern recognition. Um, that's, and if you want to know where this, so I've made this as a, sticker so this peels off and goes on glass it's called a decal and it's got the 60 digits on the outside and if you look closely there's 24 digits on the inside it was inspired by marco roden's toroidal coil so if you want more if you want to know more about this these revelations it comes from two books um, this book here is the workbook for children and i've got nine books on fibonacci I'll show you which one it is. It's, there's the workbook. And then I did a set of nine books. So the set of nine is volume one, volume two, 
and volume three has a chapter on the 60 code. And I'll just show you the front covers of all the others. That's volume four, volume five, like the pine cone, sunflower. Volume six is three fi codes. Volume seven is wheels within wheels and more codes being cracked. And this is the true value of pi on volume eight and volume nine is more information. And I've also done a DVD on the same subject, just on the golden ratio. Yeah, so um, make what you will of it. It's just, it's important as we um, get hold of these discoveries that we write them down with the idea that we can share this information. So I just made this revelation and I'm really excited to get any feedback. Perhaps someone will do an animation of this, of a particle going through that spiral pathway. It perhaps could help people with depression or it's used for healing and peaceful to view. So um, mathematics is an amazing language. It's a star language. And our focus at the 108 Academy is to make sure that we can pass on this amazing ancient lost knowledge to the youth of today. Stay in tune for more information.